Hi, this is Andrew Twidwell, owner of ABT Plumbing Electric Heat and Air. Once again, with the show you got this, it's a show of DIY do's and don'ts. And I am the host, and I was like trying to think of what I was going to say with this. I've got Rosalie on the line too. Can you talk right now? I can until the uh, drilling starts again <laughs> upstairs. So. so once again, she's got um, construction going on above her head in the apartment upstairs. And um, yeah, the last show we recorded, they were um, dropping two by fours on the ground. So she had to mute herself. So um, yeah, <laughs> so um, it, it's going to be interesting. Um, we, we, we get through this. I'm going to say that because we need to push forward on this show, you are going to be traveling. So we can't um, do this next week. I just yeah. want to say I apologize for anyone who actually enjoys the banter because I will be probably very quiet this show. You're welcome. <laughs> for those of that can't stand the sound of my voice, and I I'm with you, I'm going to be pretty quiet. But I am here. Andrew does not have me well, ho hostage. Hopefully they're on lunch. So you did hear the, the music going now. So, yeah. I hear the music, and I also the, hear the Just the Hano music blasting upstairs. Yeah. 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 So I'm probably going to be on the on the mute. Yeah. But um, t <laughs> tell me tell me about uh, your traveling. Can you share anything about that? Is it top secret? Is it fun? No, Is it it's recreational? Not. It's recreational. So, yeah. So we're, we're pre-recording this one. I'll be... Um, when this airs, actually, I'll be, well, anyway, um, I'll be gone. So we're just going to go up to um, Salmon Creek and Cleo. So, or Cleo. So just getting up in the mountains a little bit because, you know, it's that time of year. And, and apparently summer is going to get here some, one of these days. So um, we'll, we'll see. So, yeah, and we just got a new trailer this year. So we traded in our Imagine and got an Airstream. So we're really excited about that. Um, cause yeah, the, the fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. So yeah, I'll just say that anyway. So yeah, I do love trailers. So, <laughs> um, I was born poor white, you know, um, I did, I did just get the trailer reference and yeah. I did have to <laughs> unmute myself after I laughed out loud. Cause that yeah. is so inappropriate. So yeah. inappropriate. And it ain't home until the wheel, take, until you take the wheels off. Come on now. So. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Well, wheels I'm are still on it. Wheels are still I'm, on. I'm considering it. I'm considering a trailer this week because of the construction zone that I'm involuntarily in. But yeah. um, it's okay. We're gonna get through this. And the good news is that when we started kind of talking last time, it was we were still waiting for summer 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 by now i feel pretty confident summer has arrived it's it's on its way yeah. to los angeles we were looking at the, the the forecast for next week so again this sorry this is this we were pre-recording this a week ahead of a, a, a time and you know we're still running the furnace i ran the furnace last night so and this morning so it does look like it's going to be 90 degrees next week by the time this airs it's going to be 90 so but we'll see yeah. they've been they've been yeah. wrong a lot this year because it's been some wonky, wonky weather this year with the yeah. rain and the late rain and the the fog banks that are coming in all the way into Sacramento and yeah, yeah, it's been kind of crazy. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm actually meanwhile, gonna... everybody's hot back east, and my son's down in Mexico City and dying. He says it's been like in the 90s, and um, mm -hmm. it's normally Mexico City is at 7,000 feet, so it's normally kind of just a constant 70 degrees. Maybe 80, but it's been in the 90s and no one's got air conditioning or heat. Um, so, yeah, everybody's Rough. miserable. And it's been weird, Rough. weird year. Um, and what else is going on? So, yeah, you got construction going on upstairs. We got new microphones. Hopefully it sounds a lot better. You, know, you last, sound better. Last you week was our better. first show that we got the microphones working because I think this is the sixth show that I've recorded on with said microphone. But... Um, I forgot to turn a toggle inside the settings. Well, so the funny, the learning. irony for me, the irony that I think is so perfect is that I finally get you to, it's plugged in, it's all perfect, you got all right. the right setups, and literally I have to mute myself for 95% of the show because <laughs> now my good microphone is picking up like sounds from upstairs. Construction noise upstairs, yeah. So I, I, yeah. When, you, when you first came on this morning, I just was laughing so hard. I was like, Andrew, you're not going to believe this. Like, it's always right. going to be something. You know, next time we record, it's going to be, you know, my dog catches a squirrel or I don't know. Right. It's going to be something. So um, I just Rolf. am so, yeah. <laughs> Rolfing under the, cow, or under the, right. the rug exactly. or something. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and me yeah. not not putting myself on mute and running across, this, across the room screaming some obscenity. <laughs> so 
Like, I just feel like I just anyone who has listened now or in the past, I just appreciate the fact that you obviously don't take things too seriously. You like the banter. You like Andrew as a person. You want to support ABT. And I just thank you for showing up no matter what weird stuff happens while we're recording. And really, KNCO, good sports. I just want to say yeah. thanks so much yeah, for airing up KNCO. Because I wouldn't. <laughs> I, I totally wouldn't. So I, <laughs> this chaos that we call a radio show. But yeah, yeah, it is what it is, right? It's, it's, it's AM radio in Grass Valley. So, yeah. And we appreciate um, anyone who's listening. We do listening. appreciate everybody that listens, and we appreciate KNCO for actually airing our show. Um, and this so maybe week, we sh- you are going to – I just want to give you producer's credit before I back out because um, yes. I am going to go on mute. Um, I want to give you producer's credit this week because not only did um, I not have anything lined up, you went and found your own topic. I found a little content. And you have to carry the entire show for the next 19 minutes. So I may like point at you to come in and you can tell me, (laughs) no, no. (laughs) You can try. Um, So with that, Andrew, please take it away. Good on you for the research and the execution. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, well, you started it. You, You planted the seed. So Rosie's like, let's talk about water features because you've got a lot of experience with water features. And I do, I actually, I've built quite a few of them. Um, and starting when I was pretty young, I mean, I was a teenager and I was making water fountains just for fun because I had, you know, a bunch of scrap pipe around and I was doing sculpture and all this stuff. So I was like, ah, let's, let's put water, let's let's put a pump in this and see what happens. Um, so I continue to do that and I really like the sound of water and, um, every house that I seem to move into, there always seems to be some noise, except for one. I've had one house that was on top of Banner Mountain. We'd had no noise up there, which was, and I, we didn't have a water feature up there. But the last two houses are usually some road noise. And so trying to figure out a way to mask said noise has always been ta- a task that I take to try to, you know, and it's just a n- nice white noise in the background. And it's also soothing. But I thought I'd talk a little bit about, um, we're going to talk about water features, but right now I'm going to lead in with the pros and cons of a pond, because this is one of those things that I, I've always wanted a pond. Uh, I always wanted to make a pond, and I never have. Um, and even the last water feature I did, I was going to make it a pond, and then I did a bunch of um, squirreling down different articles and reading about how difficult they are and decided not to make a pond. And I did a a water feature that a dry pond essentially. But anyway, let's talk about the pros and cons of a actual pond where you've got a tub of water, if you will, you know, that you can have fish and stuff in there. So, you know, one of the major pros of having a pond is the visual appeal because they are gorgeous. And, I, and I'm, I've been a, a nerd with fish. I've had saltwater tanks. I've had freshwater tanks since I was a little kid. I remember having a bluegill that I caught when I was a kid. When I was like seven, my dad, we, brought it, we caught it up in Russian River and we took it all the way back to San Francisco and put a little pond in the garage. And then we actually, it grew too big and we let it go in... Golden Gate Park and one of the ponds there. So, yeah. Again, back in the 70s. So, yeah. These things happen. Like, and uh, I've, oh, speaking of letting things go in weird places, this, this happened to a, um, a school teacher of mine who I met in the 70s and we're still friends. Um, he raised chickens in Pacifica and he would have one rooster and have and have eggs and he would hatch set eggs and every once in a while you get another rooster. What do you do with the rooster? So, you know, most people, you know, twirl, grab him by the head and twirl him around. But he got to the point where he was just letting him go at the zoo. He would take him to the San Francisco Zoo and throw him over the fence. He was an old city guy, too. So, <laughs> and he would try to line it up to throw into the, you know, the lion's den or something like that. <laughs> anyway, the 70s, uh, okay, right? So, okay. I have a window, right? Real right. quick. Uh, okay. I worked at a zoo. If yeah. some crazy person threw a birds over the fence, oh my gosh! Like you, do, are you kidding me? Like clink, clink yeah. with the handcuffs, dude. Like yeah. no. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Although I will tell you that surprisingly, um, lions and tigers both actually enjoy um, fowl. They they do enjoy yeah. some some chicken, some duck. I will say. It's fun we, to chase around have, and yeah. We had well, we had ducks that would land. Like we would have water features throughout the zoo. Right, and those those poor ducks 
would yeah. misjudge where the water feature was or right. if the water feature was within the lion enclosure. Um, right. So more than once I heard and the pouncing the radio, range. Yeah. yeah I, I would hear on the radio like, oh, Leonard got a duck. And it was like, <laughs> so anyway, I, it's, um, but please, for anyone who's actually listening, if you have don't throw stuff fowl, in don't and, throw and don't, throw, don't throw random fish into ponds because I know and, you know some of the some of the um, ponds in Little Gate Park have some pretty exotic fish now because just like have, don't don't yeah. throw birds into the zoo. That's my PSA. Yeah, yeah. that's it. <laughs> Again, the seventies there was a little, you know no helmet laws, no seatbelt laws, riding in the back of trucks, that whole thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> so anyway, ponds visual appeal. So I've always loved ponds. I've always wanted one. So there's the, the definite pro is the visual appeal because they are gorgeous, right? And, you know, you have koi, you can have other types of fish swimming around in them, and they're just gorgeous. But one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is just how costly they are and how much maintenance it, it costs or how much, it, how much maintenance it takes to actually keep up on these things. Even just a simple water feature is, is maintenance intensive, but a pond can be a huge maintenance intensive. Because all that debris that's falling in all day long, all those leaves and stuff, you got to deal with, right? And it can get to the point where it can become toxic for the for the fish, whether it's just from their own excrement or all the leaves and debris that's falling in there. Um, you're constantly cleaning it. You got to filter it, um, and then you've got algae blooms, and, you, and then you can't see the fish, so you got to deal with algae blooms and try to get the water back down to a to a place where you want where it's actually aesthetically pleasing. You got to deal with pH issues so that the fish don't die. You got to deal with nitrates so the fish don't die. You got to deal with all this stuff. So it is, there is a lot that goes into these. If that is something that you're really into, it's worth the effort, right? Because it is, if that if that's your hobby, then it's totally worth it. But you can expect to spend, you know, two to eight hours a week working on this thing. Um, unless you've got a really huge pond, which then it doesn't require much. But we're just talking about one of those little backyard ponds that you put in that's maybe, you know, 5 by 5 10 by 10 something like that. Um, those, there's not enough water in there to, to, uh, to deal with all the chemical chemistry issues that, that you're going to run into. You have to actually intervene. So that was one of the reasons why I didn't put a pond in because that was my plan. We actually had in our, our, our house in Grass Valley... That was my plan. I really wanted to have a pond with fish, and I started reading all this stuff, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I never really thought about how much time that would be involved with dealing with this thing. So we put in what's called, what's affectionately called a dry pond, which um, you've probably seen where the water go, you know, will go either sprinkling down from a, a fountain or down a stream, and then just kind of disappears into the gravel. And those are so far so much easier to deal with because you don't have to worry about the chemistry because you don't have any fish to deal with, right? Um, the aesthetics is you don't have this vat of water. So if it blooms, you've got an algae bloom, you're probably not going to notice it in your stream or your fountain unless it gets really bad. But surprisingly, since the fact that the water is going through all this gravel to work its way down to perf all the way, percolate all the way down to the, to the sump, it's a great filter. So it's a biological filter. All the water going over the rocks and stuff actually will digest a lot of this stuff. So I put one of those in and it's been great. The maintenance is, is monthly as opposed to weekly. So we're only out there cleaning up the leaves out of it maybe on a, every, once a month, sometimes even once a quarter. Um, and it looks great. And you fill it up every once in a while because, of course, you know, they leak or mine leaks because I didn't use the right liner, but whatever. Um, but it looks really great, right? So those are pro sound, kind of the pros and cons of installing a pond compared to installing a dry sump. If you were going, if you were thinking about doing one of these things, I would highly recommend a dry sump. And actually, I got the same thing with our landscaper because we actually had our our last big push for the um, yard. We actually hired a landscaper because it was the first time in my life where I could actually write a check and have this stuff done as opposed to me having to do all the backbreaking work of planting and moving and all, you know, doing the pavers and all this stuff. He literally said, I've ripped out more ponds and installed dry sumps than I've installed ponds. So that kind of got me, got me going down this rabbit hole. So I don't want to talk you out of it. People out there that in the interwebs and on the radio, but 
really think about how much time and effort you're going to have to put to this because the intent behind a lot of this stuff is to relax, right? Um, have this pretty feature that you can sit by and read your book or listen to your audio books or just listen to music and meditate or whatever. Um, not having to work on it constantly. And if you got a pond, you're going to be working on it a lot. So if that's your drill, if that's your gig, do do it. But if it's not, don't. Um, so I thought I'd kind of put that out there. So where are we going to go from there? So then we can get into water, other type of water features. So the one that we installed was a dry sump with a water, um, a stream that came down. It looks great. It's still there. It's still functioning. It's four years old now and I've had very little issues with it. The pump runs all year long, every day. Um, the water's clean. Haven't had any issues. So then you can get into smaller water features. So now you're just talking about like a little bucket of water, essentially, or a pot or some kind of vessel that can hold the water. So it's not necessarily a hole in the ground or something that you have to put a liner in. Now you're just talking about something that you can put on a deck or onto a patio or something like that. Those you can be really creative. You can go buy them, which you can get a nice one, but they're really fun to make because you can get pretty creative and there's a bunch of stuff on YouTube and Pinterest uh, on different designs that you can kind of get an idea of what you can do. You can do, you know, like a rock waterfall. You can do like one of mine. I literally have, I did a bunch of face masks back in the eighties with all my friends. And I've got this one that I cast out of zinc and I drilled a hole through his forehead, through Eric Browning's forehead and put a hose bib on the end of it that comes right out of his forehead and water drips out of it. And, um, you can get really creative. You can get really fun. You can do different, like I say, waterfalls, rocks, sculptures. You can also, um, use rocks. I've done some things with rocks where I, we have rotor hammers that are available, but you can rent a rotor hammer and drill holes through them and just have a hose that goes up and have the water percolate over it. And you can actually do this. It doesn't, you can go rent a rotor hammer for, you know, 35, 50 bucks and drill a hole through a granite boulder and have this really cool thing that you make. It's not something that you go buy. It's something that you actually make. And then all you need is a place for uh, the water to sit. So a sump of some sort and a small little pump, a little 110 pump that you can buy for 20 to 50 bucks, depending on how many gallons of water you want to have moving. And you've got this beautiful sculpture that's functional and actually can be relaxing. Um, some of the other things that I've done in the past were um, rocks, copper pipe, sculptures, um, streams. You can do all sorts of really fun, different things to make these things, make these things fun and exciting and, and cool and have this nice little quieting, meditative thing outside of your door, right? Um, and it does quiet down. It's a nice white noise background for your, um, to block out any kind of traffic noise that you got. Rosalie's got Quick something question. to say. Quick question in between all the noises here. Um, would you say, do you have any idea? And I, I know there's a lot of different elements and directions to go, but if you were to be giving advice to a friend and listen, you're talking to at least 13 friends out there right now. Um, is there like kind of a budget you might expect to spend or can you kind of touch on that a little bit? Yeah. So, you know, if you're doing, if this is purely a DIY thing, you know, which the majority of my fountains are, um, just cause I like creating these things. Um, you're talking under 50 bucks for the majority of stuff. Cause you, you, it's the, really the only thing you got to buy is a pump and you can, if it's just a small pump and all you're doing is lifting water, maybe 18 inches or something like that, you can get away with a $20 pump off of Amazon or from uh, uh, A to Z or um, B and C and they'll do great. You can get, obviously get more expensive depending on the material that you're using. You know, I'm looking through here and, and they've got one, the pond outlet online's got a $400 rock that's got a hole in it. You can go find a rock that you really like and rent a rotor hammer at, you know, Hanson brothers and drill a hole right through the center of it. And drilling with a rotor hammer is not hard. And it's something that most DIY people can do. Um, 
And if, you know, you might want to put a little water as you're drilling just to kind of keep the, the drill bit cool, but you can do these things. Or, you know, you can go to Harbor Freight and buy a rotor hammer for under $100 and make a bunch of them with bit drill bits. So I think, actually, I think last time I looked at it was $120 or something like that with drill bits for a rotor hammer that would go through a granite rock. Um, so these are kind of, yeah, so cost can be pretty inexpensive because the places that we, the place that we live, you can go find some really cool rocks that are, are nice. Right. And just drill a hole through it now. And, and I've actually even done things like bolted rocks together with, um, all thread and drilled holes through them for the all thread and then put another hole for, um, a water pipe. I had one, and I did have a fountain. That's right. I did have a fountain up there on, on Banner Mountain. It was boulders that I put together, um, drilled holes through them and had a half inch copper pipe that went through the center of them and then put inch and a half pipe in between the rocks. So they were suspended in between and they ranged from the bottom one was about 18 inches in diameter and it kind of got smaller as I got to the top. So they kind of like a cone shaped, but it was, you know, about six to eight inches in between. And I ended up leaving that there for the, the new owners and that was, you know, if, if you were to buy something like that, if you were to have somebody to come in and commission somebody to do something like that, you're probably talking about two or three grand to have somebody do that easy. Um, but you can, it was literally just, you know, it was a weekend project of my own. Um, got some rocks from the hard, from the, from Hanson brothers. And, you know, I think I've maybe paid 30 bucks cause you buy them by the pound, not by the rock. Right. Um, and set up this nice little fountain in front and it was a dry sump. Again, a dry sump fountain in front of our house, no fish. And although, oh my gosh, no, I, we were, so you were mentioning the mosquitoes and we forgot about talk about that. So we did up there, we did have a mosquito issue in that, in that pond. So I put a goldfish in there and that goldfish lived for like five or six years. I ended up taking him out when we moved and I put him in another pond and, um, that, and it was, and it wasn't a pond. It was just boulders. And so he was swimming in between all the boulders. So there were like this, these little way, paths through the, through the fountain that he was managed to work and froze every year. And he managed to live through it. So, and if you do need to control, um, yeah, we got a little more time. If you do need to control, um, mosquitoes, you don't need them. The little mosquito eaters, goldfish will do it. And goldfish are really hardy. Um, go to the pet store, buy 10 feeders for a buck. I think they're like a dime each or 20 cents each, maybe two bucks and throw them in your pond and they'll, the ones that survive will last forever. The ones that don't survive end up being food for the ones that do survive. Um, but they were going to be eaten by something anyway, cause that's what they're sold for. They're sold for bigger fish to eat. So you're, you're, you're giving one lucky or two lucky fish a chance to live for five to 10 years. So <laughs> you're laughing. You got your microphone off because of, are they banging upstairs right now? Okay. Yeah. So she's got construction going on anyway. So hope this is informative. I know we kind of scrolled all over the place with this one because this was kind of just off the top of my head. We didn't really have a script figured out, but hope I inspired you to go out and create something fun for your backyard. Cause right now is the time to do it. Cause we're spending more and more time outside with these long days and these warmer weather. So make something fun, create something. Um, but if you need any help with any plumbing, electrical, heating, or air, you can reach us at 530-230-9092. And we still have the special for the $97 drain cleaning, any drain in the residential only, sorry, we're not doing any commercial, single family, no, no apartment buildings, um, $97 guaranteed. If we don't clear it, it's free. Um, you can reach us again, 530-230-9092. And you can find us on the web at abtplumbing.com. Like us on Facebook. We've got all this information on Facebook. And with that, thanks for listening. We'll catch you guys next week. Bye.